So I got this email telling me that my USPS package was on hold and I needed to update the address with this link. So I'm on this website and it says exactly that. Fill in the correct address with the link below and this is it. Couple buttons to click update, privacy policy, terms of use, FOIA, whatever. And it seems like these are all valid USPS links except the click update button. If I click on this, it brings me to another page, USPS tracking. This includes includes allegedly my tracking number and the delivery failed address C unknown. We could go ahead and enter all the information to get us our package back in order, but here's the thing. I'm not on the real USPS website. In fact, I'm here on IP address 74.91.30.221. And even better, if I were to visit this page for the first time, my web browser would tell me that this is a dangerous website because it's not real. If I take a look at the details, Brave, the web browser I'm using, tells me that it recently found phishing on the site that I'm trying to visit. Phishing sites pretend to be other sites to trick you. In fact, maybe I tricked you. You could call me clickbait or whatever, but look, I didn't receive that email. In fact, I'm hunting for phishing websites across the open internet with some tools like Census. Let me be straight up, this is a sponsored video, but I really love using Census to see what weird, wild, and wacky stuff might be out on the open internet. Even scams. Deception, tricks and lures, things like phishing websites. We have used Census before in other videos, and I was talking about just how easy it is to use some of the different labels. You could search for command and control frameworks or open directories, things that just host files on the internet, but they even have a label set for phishing. And this is pretty neat because we could just see what's out there. They include all of these labels and get a little bit more details on how that is hosted out on the internet. Here's an IP address 3.140.20.247, whatever, hosted as an Amazon website over in Ohio, apparently. We've got a couple in Missouri, and maybe that's the one I was just looking at, to be honest. Let's see what's over in Quebec, Canada. 15156.32206, hosting on HTTPS, so that port 443. Let's see. Presumably phishing and maybe the GoFish software. Some well-known tooling to be able to perform phishing campaigns, normally with good intent, but sometimes with ill intent. Some of the details about a GoFish instance, like the certificate that it's using and maybe some of the CN information, is used by census to track these down. We can go take a look at this website. We'll just go hit the go button up here. That will bring me to that page. I don't think there's anything really worthwhile though. Are we actually gonna see this? HTTPS whining about the certificate? Nah, 404 page not found. You might not always get a hit, but that's kind of the fun of just exploring and seeing what's out there. Here's another. Let's try 204, 12, 231, 243. This is historical data, presumably a Microsoft server running IIS in a fake USPS store. Okay, so pretty similar to what we seen in the other website. Dangerous site again. Okay. Is this one looking like the exact same scheme? Yeah, I think so. Here's that loading page and exactly that. This has to be interesting. This must be like some sort of easy template that's just out there and available. It's like the exact same tracking number and everything. <laughs> what happens if we fill this out? Can I? Okay. I need to put in bogus stuff. What about, uh, screw you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. This is a sponsor video. We got to be professional. Uh, Doug, that's my, uh, alias here. I'm in downtown of oh, the old New York, Nebraska, apparently. I just hit N on my keyboard. How about a good keyboard spray for the old phone number? A at A.com is totally a fine email. Let's see what that does for me. Anything? Anything? Does it give me a download? Because that'd be cool. Oh, credit card info. Of course. Yep. Look, they're trying to steal some of those deets. That's wild. And that is phishing at its core, right? Hey, trying to dupe the victim for some information that they just happen to give up. Whether it's their password, whether it's credentials, whether it's access cookies, whatever multi-factor authentication token, or sensitive information like credit card details. I do think it's pretty neat though that Census has already kind of found and categorized, built out this capability to look for other fake USPS sites. I don't know if we're gonna find any others that look any different or might be separate from what we've already seen, but we've got a couple other IP addresses and maybe there's some oddball stuff. We can keep exploring in an interesting way though because Census just makes this easy. Like if I were to go ahead and click on any of the other labels that it suggests or finds other entries for, like a login page or a fake database, maybe file sharing. Let's see if we get anything neat. These are the only 
hits that presumably have a login page set up with phishing. And it's kind of interesting. It looks like this top one in Singapore has uh, RDP open. So the remote desktop protocol hosted by GoDaddy here. This is a fake USPS. Is it the same as what we've seen thus far? Oh no, it just goes right to a fake USPS, different tracking number. So maybe a little bit of a different template, but yeah, it goes through the full form and usual scam. I'm really interested on the entries here because this has SSH, presumably for their own control and management, also has port 80 with an Apple ID.bf that's a redirect 302 and the phishing page, fake USPS present there, and a couple other ports listening, like HTTP running on 888 with the 403 forbidden, but MySQL in the mix, and Quad8 with a strange title there with a the login. Is this like an all-in-one? And this is a complete guess, I can't say for sure. Was this an all-in-one credential harvester or credit card thing where you could just browse to the database and see the hits? What? <laughs> what is this? Can I translate this? Please use the correct entrance portal. The newly installed safety entrance has been opened. Ah, uh, this doesn't look right. Close the safe entrance. This will expose your panel login address directly to the internet, which is very dangerous. Please operate carefully. Look, you've already done that. This is this is already out on the internet. I, this has to be some sort of kit. Can we like find this? Is this on GitHub or something where we could track down like how this all came to life? This is completely uncharted territory for me because I have no idea what any of this says and I don't know if it's gonna be fruitful full trying to find it. Oh, uh, where am I? Can I translate this page, please? When logging into the Pagoda panel today, the following thing, what is Pagoda? What is that? X shell remote login. Odd. Is that a thing? Am I just not smart on that? Just Googling around the Pagoda panel. There's no other real details here. Is that set in stage for phishing or is this just, just happened to be some other tooling? I don't know, I'm gonna fall down the rabbit hole on this, but that, I mean, that's the whole fun of this idea, right? Just seeing what's out there. If we go back to the drawing board, do we see anything else? Just going back to labels phishing as our search. Is there anything else that's odd? One of these labels that kind of follows through with it though is email. We have some others we could click into. Deceptive, yep, probably a trick. Honeypot, ooh, worthwhile. Commanding control, maybe C2. Let's start with email. Can we get a fake phishing email sign in? Alberta's got something. Is this tagged with email just because SMTP is open? That might be the case. No, it is GoFish. So, okay, it must be sending out phishing emails with its own email server, potentially. That's a complete guess and me probably not putting the puzzle pieces together and it's just port SMTP 25. But this has a login page. At least that has a tag for it. How about this one? 443 is not found, but the GoFish page on 3636 actually includes the login. Can we like go to that? Yeah. <laughs> That's their thing, dude. That's the GoFish framework. Ooh, look at youraccountlogin.com. That looks fake as heck. Youraccountlogin.com, usual email again. Is this another GoFish structure and setup? Yeah, presumably. Okay, different port, quad three this time. Let's go. Dude, how are these on the internet? Like, why would you, I, I don't know if that's the intent. I would assume it's not. I guess it like might need to be, right? Obviously to get a lot of that messaging out, like email, fish, et cetera. But that still just feels like something you could and should lock down if you're doing that for real. A lot of these email tagged ones presumably are just go fish, kind of staging and setting up a lot of that hosting. So I don't know if we're gonna see at least just cursory, hey, a faked login for anything else that's out on the public internet. At the very least, still pretty cool to be able to go track all these down. All right, that's enough falling down the rabbit hole there. Um, what else is an option? Web control panel hosting, default landing page. Deceptive would be worthwhile. I do, oh, gaming, gaming and email. Valve is one of the ports noted here. This is the only hit, what is this? Oh, is this a game server? Noobs workshop. Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Um, that's gotta be like a like a CSGO server, right? I don't know, I don't play CSGO. I also don't host servers on that, but it's really funny that that's in combination with GoFish. So let's walk us back because there is more here. File sharing we didn't dig into. Deceptive would be fun and worthwhile. Opener would also be neat. I wonder if that does anything odd with phishing. That's quite a combination here. Germany's got some hits. China has whoa, that many ports open. Where's the open? 
Ender. Let's get one of the China hits. Pallets Project Work Zerg. That's like Flask, typically, right? Why is that on that odd port? QR code generator. Generate QR code. I don't trust that. Um, here's the directory listing though. Here's the 3460 has a directory listing set in the title. What is that? Um, exploit.php and randomness and okay this sounds super interesting we could also upload you know what let's pivot to a linux host so windows won't whine and defender antivirus shenanigans let's just call this opender and let's kind of mirror everything out of that will that work and what's with those HTML entities? Because those are, are they not HTML entities? Ampersand and semicolons? So index.php, as we would have expected, is the raw page. Interesting that it has file upload capabilities. JPEG? Uh, how big is this file? LS LHA. Oh, duh. It's 13 bytes. Yo, there's no shot that's a JPEG. It's text. Crawler HXIGD. Okay. Other PHP files aren't real. Exploit.php sounds neato though. What is in that? Oh, okay. <laughs> You, you 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 got me all excited. You got me all hyped up for that. Reading it set password. What's in the zip file? The zip file's gotta be neat. You know what? No, let me go see what these HTML entities are. We don't need anything fancy here. We could just do some simple cyber chef uh from HTML entity. Yeah, that's that. Oh, <laughs> Okay, we will translate. Do that. Business license and front desk information. Let's unzip. Can I move the dot zip to thing dot zip? Yeah? Okay. Let's clean up that. Uh, 7ZX. That. Enter password. Hmm. <gasps> password. Nope. F crack zip. I'm just doing the CTF challenge of the internet right now. We could do zip to John, right? That's a lot. For John dot text. We could do a John the Ripper on that, but that pro okay, never mind. That was dumb. <laughs> This is, this is so funny. 7ZX to extract it. Yes, we can extract everything. The password is 123456. Super duper elite. Uh, what do we got? An executable file now, presumably. That was the only thing in it, but I am curious, what is that uh, Google translated? Alibaba documents remarks, business license and front desk flow information. .exe. Okay, move all .exe into something .exe. What is that? It is an executable, not stripped and not a .NET assembly. So we would need to do like legit debugging. We could kick it to virus total if we really wanted to, but I am fading away. I'm falling away and getting distracted from just hunting for phishing websites. So there's more that I wanted to show you, but that would be cutesy to dig into. All right, all right. Let me get back to census and exploring our fun little jolly jaunt for phishing pages. Online reverse shell generator. <laughs> Dude, it's just revshells.com. This is just a self-hosted revshells like from zero day CTF and Ryan. An express server? This IP address is wild. Important, please read. This is a payload to test for cross-site scripting. It's meant to be self-hosted instance of XS. Is this someone's just like exploit box that's just out on the internet for whatever reason? Wow, mixing this with Opender could give you some weird, interesting stuff. I feel like Openders are always kind of fun to mess with, but you get, I feel like a little bit more shenanigans when it's also it amongst a phishing page and website. There is more though that I think is worthwhile to explore because we have been digging down into the labels, but they also showcase some of the AS here and some other locations and other service filters that also include some of the software vendors or products. Now we were kind of having some fun with the fake USPS, but there are a couple other interesting things like look, the Python Software Foundation, when you spin up Python 3 HTTP server or a simple HTTP server. But if I bring us back to the start one more time, there's more here because I showed you that fake USPS. But if I keep exploring these, there is also another that I have seen census be very good about finding for us. And that could just straight up give us malware, which would be worthwhile and kind of fun to explore. Maybe that's an option for you and something that we could maybe tinker with in another video. But look at this fake Chrome update. We have a couple hits for these coming from Ireland. Appreciate that. IPv6 address. Ah, that might be weird stuff. Akamai cloud instance, Microsoft hosting something spooky. Deceptive here with a phishing page, SSH to be able to control it. And okay, it brings us to techfrenetic.com.
com as the redirect. And that is our fake Chrome update. Can I just go there? Let's check it out. Dangerous site. Yes, of course. Clicking this. Yep. Broken SSL certificate uh, for Tech Frenetic. And as you would expect, fake Google Chrome update and scam. Social engineering, phishing, ploy. Let me see what this link is. I want to update Chrome. Brings us to a page with an anchor tag. But clicking update brings me to where? Oh, 404 page not found. I'm showing you this in Kali so you can see it a little bit better, but this would have been s2t.de temp engine chrome.msi. Absolutely a thousand percent would have been malware. If it said just some fake MSI, a Microsoft installer, that's not available right now. That is a 404, but I wonder if it was ever there. Did anyone put this on the Wayback Machine? Oh, that actually has a hit in like uh, 2024, right? Most recently in March, maybe Virus Total would have it. Let me just search. Can I use that URL? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that has a hit from a month ago. Of course, phishing just about everywhere. Malware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We could download the sample if we wanted to. But like, that's been the fun of just exploring and poking with these. The thing is, we could just find a ton of these. Like, hey, here's some South Korea thing. Uh, presumably with an HTTP service hosting these and a lot of others, right? SSH on a very odd port. HTTP with our usual uh, fake Chrome update. Maybe that's just too big to render. Let's just go. Let's go check it out. Let me just hit Control U to view the source. That's fine. Here is the button and that has a unique ID for download X. So let me search for that. Download X. Get element by ID. Add event listener to click. Once we click it, we try to reach chromium text space get.html but ooh if it doesn't respond then it errors with that <laughs> which is certainly not english google translate says an error has occurred so nothing fancy but in russian mm, i'm assuming this url is just dead then that probably is probably offline what else is weird here this one in England looks like it has a lot of runway. Even as a file sharing tag. 3121141612. Doom SMP. The Minecraft group? <laughs> FTP 21 is multi-craft server. Oh my goodness. SSH random port totally makes sense. HTTP for a Minecraft dynamic map. Yeah, we're playing Minecraft here. Oh, that's that's a fish right there, isn't it? <laughs> wow. And a fake Chrome update. Railway system map. Let me check. First of all, hang on. Let me check. Does the fake Chrome update actually give us a payload now? At least on this host. Clicking update. Oh, oh. What's happening? Easyhighschool.site. I don't think that's what I wanted. This has to be another kit, right? Because they're using download X again with the same ID. Click and it just goes to that. This feels fake. This feels very fake. But does do we get a dynamic Minecraft map? That's the real question. <laughs> Please, please tell me that I am actively looking at someone's Minecraft server map because that is incredible. Is that the right understanding? Can you tell me in the comments? Am I crazy? We have gone all over the place from fake USPS websites to fake Chrome updates to this. Holy cow. What did I find? I don't even know. Guys, we gotta tell Live Overflow. Hey, thank you so much for watching, everyone. I really enjoy these kind of videos because I feel like it is a little bit of both education and entertainment with just the weird stuff that's out there. And it's just a matter of exploring. It's just a matter of seeing what is genuinely on the open internet. And look, Census is one awesome way to do that. If you haven't heard of them before, if you aren't familiar, please, please, please do go take a look. There's a link in the video description, jh.live slash census. Thanks so much to Census for sponsoring Sponsoring this video and man I hope we do a little bit more of these I, I I really think they're fun I hope you do too I'll see you in the next video